Hello guys, take a look at your screen quickly. So this scholarship covers a stipend of close to $40,000. As you can see on your screen, you also get your tuition waived, 100% of your tuition waived. You equally get additional payments in form of a conference grant, research grant, totaling up to $7,500 and there are several other benefits. Apart from these, you also see that you get your application fee waived while you're applying. Most of the departments do not require GRE and most of the departments will also waive the TOEFL or the IELTS if you already studied in an English majority country. So it hardly gets better than this. And I'm talking about fully funded masters and PhD scholarships at Emory University in the US. So welcome to my YouTube channel. If you're joining us for the first time, take a seat. But um, where have you been? There are lots of videos already on this channel on fully funded scholarships from around the world. So look around. I'm sure you find something that catches your interest. And if you're a returning viewer, returning subscriber, thanks for coming back. Thanks for the constant support. And I hope you get a scholarship sooner than later. So let's get into the business of today. Full scholarships at Emory University. So Emory is one of the best universities, best of the best in the US. And to get admission and to get scholarship here, you have to come with your A game. You have to come with a very strong application, your transcript, your essays, everything has to be, everything have to be in good state. So what do you do? So now you're interested in this university on the website. So there are different faculties here. You can see business, the um, Laney Graduate School, Law School, Med Medical School, Nursing, Public Health. So we we'll use this one, the Laney Graduate School for an example, because you get most of the courses here, both in the practical sciences or the social sciences. So Laney Graduate School and straight I'm going into admissions. Of course, you can do your own survey of the website, extract relevant information. But for the sake of this video, I'm going straight into admission related matters. So admissions, and then I'm going to the degree programs offered at this university. As you will find out, most times you can move directly with your BSc to a PhD program, even without a master's. It is possible in many universities in the US, and I'll be showing you that as well. So let's take chemistry, for instance. Let's take chemistry. Um, so let's open the chemistry tab. I've actually opened it here as well. This was the tab I began with. So you can see here, this is the chemistry department. So you can get full information about chemistry department and then go to admissions, PhD, apply for a PhD. So straight away, it tells you how to apply. It said the application fee is $75. However, you can get your application fee waived if you attend some virtual program at this university. So some Zoom events, application events at this university. So click on this link, you see the events. You can attend them on Zoom or on Skype or the rest of those online platforms. Or you can also claim financial hardships. So let me show you how to do that. So financial hardships, both for, it's not just for home students, it's also for international students. So this is for some coin, there are two ways of getting your application fee waived. You can join some qualifying programs or claim financial hardships. So let's just go to the more straightforward one, the financial hardships. So that's number two, rush to number two. So the good news is that international applicants are eligible for this fee waiver as well. So it's not just for domestic students. So international students can also apply. So how do you get the financial waiver? There are some documents you need to provide at least one of these documents. And look at the last one here. Let's make it bolder. International applicants might upload information about currency rates or, or other economic conditions that show the application fee is financially prohibitive in their circumstances. So it means you can show the rate of inflation in your country. You can show the currency disparity, dollar compared to your home country. There are several ways you can do this. So it means you can write a short statement. 
showing that um, $75 is a lot of money in your home country. That is even more than probably your monthly pay. And it will cost you significant financial hardship if you remove that money from your pocket. In case you need a guidance on how to do that, there's this document I shared in a previous video. You can take a look at this document. Appeal for application fee waiver by claiming financial hardships. So these are some of the points you can mention. You don't need to mention all of them. So this was a video, um, a document I shared in a previous video where the application fee was $105. So this one is 75, it's still quite high. So what do you do? You edit this, I'll leave a link to this stuff, of course, to this document in the description box. You can edit this and put 75. $75 is a major chunk of your savings. So remember to convert your salary to US dollars as instructed here. I think they said here that there's no need for sensitive documents. So no need for like your social security number, tax returns and things like that. So you don't need to put like sensitive documents as said in um, the second tab. So the exchange rates, talk about the economic conditions of your home country. Talk about your caring responsibilities that even the money you're earning, you don't need to cater to your retired parents or children who are not working, of course or you have like a disabled spouse or a disabled child. So things like that. So you can write a very one page or one and just, or half page, not even one and half, one page or half page, taking one or two of these. And with that, you submit along with your application and you get your application fee waived. And this is for all programs, by the way, not just for chemistry. You can do that for all programs at this university, um, Emory University. So you also see one interesting piece of information, another interesting piece of information. So it says here they do not offer an MSc only program. Rather, you get like an embedded MSc. So MSc and PhD are smooshed together. You have just one graduate program. So it means if you have a BSc, you can just move directly to a PhD because there's no separate MSc. I hope that is clear. And this is the case for many U.S. universities. I often tell people this, but they, a number of people still do not believe. But now you can read this on your own at Emory University. And these are the documents they require. You can see them here. Um, for the IELTS or the TOEFL, for the English test, um, they often require. Just tell them that you've studied at least one year. It's written here. At least one year in an English-speaking country. And that is sufficient in getting your IELTS and TOEFL waived. Nothing was said here about the GRE. Some departments, I must say, might require the GRE, but the majority of departments, the majority do not require the GRE. So check for your own department. So you can see the stipend we started with, 37,000 close to 40,000, your tuition will get insurance, you get extra money for like conferences, training, and the rest of them. So this is good. This is very good. So let's go back to the graduate page. So this is where we started from. Then um, let's go back to this page admissions. So remember the learning graduate school started from, good. We can go here and um, we we'll go to admissions and you can apply from here or from the course page. So you still get more information about the application fee waiver we saw earlier. You click on this link, it takes you back to that application fee waiver conditions that we saw earlier. The hardship, um, claiming hardship for your application fee to be waived, financial hardship. So that's there already. There is also a frequently asked question section. Frequently asked question section. I think it's here, FAQ. I hope you can see it, FAQ section. So you click on that and get basic information that you might be looking for. So like GRE depends on the department. Most departments, it's not compulsory. Whether you need a master's to apply for a, BH, for a PhD, most times it's not necessary as well. So you can just go through this list and see the different question and the answers they provided already. Having said that, let's go back to chemistry. So for chemistry, some departments might require you to contact supervisors. 
for chemistry they said filter the faculty list on our people page by accepting graduate students choose up to five so what they're saying here is that these people are like the professors in the department so when you go to this page you select the professors whose research interests align with yours people you'd like to work on that but they do not say whether you should contact them or not so if you're not sure you can always go it's always a good idea to still contact them and to just tell them about your intention to apply to the department even though you do not you might not need their permission to submit an application for some universities the, or some departments you need a professor to say yes before you submit your application but this just says you should just look for professors that are compatible with your research and then mention their names it's also good to have their names in your personal statement when you're justifying why do you want to apply to this university why do you want to apply to this department it's a good thing to mention that professor abc does this research and this is in my area of interest it would be an honor to work on that professor abc because he's like an expert in this field and i believe he will train me to become an expert as well in the field of xyz so this is the tab so we moved from people here and we got to this tab and they said click on accepting graduate students this is the tab here at accepting graduate students so it means these professors are the ones looking for graduate students and they said you can mention up to five of them so you just click on their on this link and see what they are doing visit their website see their research and look for the ones researching in an area of and um, that you are also interested in and mention them in your um in your essays what you can also do if you're not sure whether you should contact them directly you can meet any of these people surely those in charge of admissions or graduate studies you can see Colin here you can send a message to him or her saying i'm interested in graduate studies i have shortlisted or i know the number of them a number of professors working in my area of interest do i need to send them a direct email and get their permission to apply or is it sufficient to just mention them in my application? So you can do that if there is no express information. So do not be afraid to contact the university. There's often someone there who is paid actually to respond to your questions. And a number of people are always afraid to actually contact these people. They are paid and they're waiting for you actually to, you know, answer your questions. So why not send them an email just to clarify? So this is at the chemistry department. Of course, you can check all the departments as well. You can scroll down and check other departments. Look at um, political science. Program page. And remember, we'll go to admissions. So check what they are looking for. They also give funding here, as you can see, for the five years of your um, of your studies. The amount wasn't stated, but I think it's going to be quite close to what we saw at the chemistry department. You can also send them an email and check for things like TOEFL or IELTS. Do you, is it compulsory? Most times, as I said, they scrap it for those who have already studied in the English language. What about the GRE? The GRE, I think they said, is optional. That's for politics, the scores are recommended but not required. So if you have the opportunity, why not take it? Then there's also a frequently asked questions section. And you have to also go through to check if you have outstanding questions. You can also see here that there's no separate master's degree program. You go straight to your BSc, you're going straight for a PhD. Political science here at um, Emory is often um, treated like a practical science. So you, have to, you need quantitative skills. So these are some of the bits of information you need while you're applying. It will show that you've engaged with the website, you've gotten the very good information because a number of people just rush to apply without engaging with the necessary information on the website. And of course, most of them, they miss, they, miss, they miss the mark because you've not paid attention to the distinct features of the program you're applying to. So if you write 
an essay to the university, you, you sound very general, you're not specific enough because you do not know the specific strengths of the program. This program, for instance, in political science at Emory is very maths oriented, very STEM designated, as they use the word. So if you use this word or something closer to this word in your application, it shows that you've engaged the materials they're showing you, essentially. So check for your own department and see the peculiar instructions as well needed to um, arrange your application documents and put forward a very compelling application. And I think that's it really. So we've looked at different programs, look at the application fee waiver. Um, GRE as well is not compulsory. I'll put a link to this document in the description box so you can read it on your own and craft your own financial um, difficulty application fee waiver appeal. Then the different departments and what they do and how to apply for admissions. And I hope this was useful, guys. One thing I want to leave you with is that you shouldn't be afraid to contact them directly in case you have questions. Also read through their website very well to make sure you're not asking a question that has been addressed already somewhere on the website. I think that's important. So get to work as usual. We cannot wait to celebrate you. Start putting your documents together. And of course, you can look at all the opportunities on this channel. So it will be even be better if you have like multiple applications and multiple awards. I get to select the one that is juiciest, you know, of all the awards. So spread your application a little bit more, but take time in crafting a powerful application because it's more of quality you want than just quantity it's possible to submit just four or five application and get good offers and scholarships than sending very 20 very large number of applications like 20 and getting zero offers so spend time in crafting a very competitive offer and as usual guys we cannot wait to celebrate you so get to work if you've not subscribed i wonder what you're waiting for because you're really missing out and I will see you at the top sooner than later. Bye-bye for now. Cheers.